Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on finding the value of trigonometric functions using a line. Now, if you've seen some of my other math videos, this is going to feel very familiar because it's pretty much the same process as finding the trigonometric values when you have a given point. The only difference uh, between, say, a line and an individual point um, is you have to sometimes manipulate that line to figure out where exactly your angle is. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the process. The first part of this is we're just going to sketch out the angle, see exactly where it is, um, and again, we're going to have to really carefully look at the equation of the line to figure out where that angle is. Next, we'll go ahead and see what uh, right triangle that forms in relation to the x-axis. That way we can get all of our sides. Once we have the sides, we'll go ahead and use the definition of our different trigonometric functions to make the appropriate ratios. So something like sine would you know, simply be formed by taking the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and that will give us our value for sine, all right? So let's get into an example so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here I have the equation of a line, and my goal is to figure out what are the values of the different trigonometric functions. So as we go to start this off, let's go ahead and, and sketch out what this thing looks like. So nice, really simple coordinate axes. Done. Now I'm gonna manipulate this line a little bit so that it's in slope intercept form. Uh, that way I can see what the slope is. So I'm gonna move everything over to the right side. It's gonna turn into y equals square root of 10 x. Okay, so it looks like our line uh, just goes through the origin. The y-intercept is zero. Um, let's see, what else is in there? It looks like uh, the slope is the square root of 10. Okay, we're good. All right, so there's the equation of our line. Now, as it is, there's a lot of different uh, right triangles I can form. Here's two big ones, like maybe I can form this one down here, I could form this one over here. So really, how do I know which one? Sometimes you're given a clue, uh, and it comes from restrictions on any of the variables. So this one, I'm dealing with this line, but only the part of the line where x is a negative value. So here's my x values, uh, only dealing with the negative ones. We're not even gonna deal with all of that, so eh, let's go ahead and get rid of that, scratch it out. <laughs> we don't want that part. All right, so our right triangle is actually on this side right there. All right, the next part of this is what do I even do for the sides? You know, no sides were given to me, so, so now what? The key for this is recognizing that your slope is really an expression of the rise over run, the y values over the x values. So we can use that to help us figure out the y side, rise, and the run. So let's see, uh, we have a slope of square root of 10 over 1. So we can use that for our sides. Uh, so let's see, rise, that's our y value, so square root of 10 and run of 1. All right, one other note, uh, notice how on this coordinate axis we are in the negatives. So I'm going to mark this off as negative 1 in this direction and negative square root of 10 because we're going down. If we had a different restriction, if this actually said x is greater than zero and we were dealing with this triangle, then both those values would be positive, but you just wanna be aware of where you are on this coordinate axis. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. We have two sides of this triangle now. We need to get that hypotenuse. So we'll take one of our sides squared plus the other side squared should equal our hypotenuse squared. Let's see, so there's a one plus 10 equals r squared, so 11 equals r squared, or we can just say the square root of 11 is equal to r. That hypotenuse will always be positive no matter where you are, because it's really measuring a distance from the origin to the tip of that uh, triangle. All right, so all of that is looking good. I now have three sides. Let's go ahead and figure out our trigonometric values. Starting off with sine. Sine is our opposite over our hypotenuse, so negative square root of 10 all over 11. Oh, square root of 11. Looks like we've got a little bit of extra work to do. We got to rationalize the denominator here. This will give us negative square root of um, 110 all over 11, and now I have my first value. Moving on, cosine. Cosine is my adjacent over the hypotenuse, so negative one over the square root of 11. 
Uh, and it looks like this one needs some rationalizing in the denominator as well. Let's go ahead and do that by multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of 11. So negative square root of 11 all over 11. The next big one, tangent. That'll be our opposite over adjacent, not too bad. The only thing we have uh, to cancel here looks like a couple of negative signs. This will give us a positive square root of 10. So there's our first three big trigonometric functions. Now, as you remember, the next three are almost freebies. All you gotta do is flip the first, so let's go ahead and do that. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Uh, let's start off with that cosecant. Uh, so I want to imagine flipping this over, though it might be easier to flip over the original. Let's go ahead and use that one. So square root of, oops, square root of 11 all over square root of negative 10, okay? Rationalizing this denominator would mean I need to multiply the top and bottom by square root of 10. So negative square root of 110 all over 10. All right, looks good. On to flipping over this guy. Uh, let's flip over that one instead. That'd be a little bit easier. So square root of 11 all over negative one or negative square root of 11. And one last one, if I flip over tangent, looks like that'll be one all over square root of 10. We will have to rationalize the denominator on this one. Square root of 10 over 10, and now we have all six. So one, two, three, four, let's see, four. Oh wait, that's our slope, we don't want that. One, two, three, four, five, six, nice. All right, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.